What's going on, everybody? It is Truth from Truth Talks here, and you are tuned into the Truth Talks with podcast, episode number five. Today we have Zach Moore on the podcast. We talk about his sports career prior to his unfortunate incident, and of course we dive in to where he is today, and he tells his story in his own words from his mouth. And, of course, we have a little fun. We talk about football. We talk about Drew Locke. We talk about Gardner Minshew. We talk about all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, episode number five of the Truth Talks with Podcast guest, Zach Moore. I'm just trying to get that eighth batch, eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gonna end up in that Maybach, Maybach, speed racer on that racetrack, racetrack. I'm just trying to get that eighth batch, eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gonna end up in that Maybach. Maybach speed racer on that racetrack. I like Drew Lock this year, but there's not a single world you can convince me I'd take him over Minshew, though. Well, it's – I feel like they're, they are pretty different, you know? Like, Drew, Drew has the size, and he has, like, just – his footwork isn't as great as Gardner Minshew's, and it's just – it's – they're in two different systems, and Gardner's – he kind of, like, works with his strengths – as far as um, going through his progressions and getting out of the way and just using his accuracy and anticipation. He's really good at that. But I I just think that Drew has like a lot more like potential. And I love Gardner Minshew. I mean, I would take Gardner Minshew, but it's just I, I've looked at Drew Locke's tape and I've just realized that I, I – yeah, he's just got the arm, man. He can throw it freaking anywhere, and he's got the moxie. And I, I would take either of them, but Drew's my guy, man. Drew's my guy. He He's shown to have that mobility. He can throw on the run. He can run to get first downs. And Gardner's got that, Gardner's got that too. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited for Drew's future. Like, I feel like um, once we get some more speed around him and get a, get a better line, I feel like we're solid. And in Gardner, like Gardner has shown that he he does have a pretty decent arm. He can throw the ball down the field. Yeah, which was some was a knock on him at the combine. But, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a knock on almost every quarterback yeah. in the combine. Is like they look at the this big arm. Like you look at every, like look at this year. So quarterback from Washington, Jacob Eason, yeah. is getting all this combine buzz just because he's super big and has a rocket arm. But if you look at his tape, you can't really do anything else. No. So, yeah, and if you know anything about him, he wasn't even that great at Washington. I'd, st- I'd take Browning over Easton. Yeah, it, definitely, me too. But it's – and so, yeah, he, like if you look at Georgia, Jake Fromm got the job, starting job over Easton, and Fromm has, like, what, small arm and yeah. pretty much all the same, like, kind of kind of similar to, like, Minshew's size and everything. Mm-hmm. But, but, yeah, it's just the whole big arm sort of – uh, stereotype sometimes doesn't really uh, work. Like if you, well, I don't know. Like with Drew, I like it because it's like some guys that are super big aren't super mobile, but sometimes they are like, I really like Drew because I when I see his tape, um, he's been shown to like uh, have really good anticipation and he's got like, just this sort of like weird throwing motion that I've seen him have. It's kind of reminded me of like a little bit of Philip Rivers, oh, but yeah, like not as weird, the whole yeah. sidearm yeah. thing. But I I don't know. I just like him, and I didn't think that I would like him as much as I did until watching him play, you know. And But I'm really excited, um, but I'm also excited for Gardner too. I hope that the Jaguars stick with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and like because there's a lot of – I've heard like a couple reports saying that they should take – a QB out of this class, and I don't like that at all. Like, I really hope that they develop him, and I don't know what y'all are gonna do with, with everything else. Like, as far as, as what Foles, you just gotta yeah. like keep him as a backup. I hope I we guess. train him. But I mean, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. You never know what we're gonna do. We'll we'll find a way to make the worst decision possible. <laughs> the worst decision possible, right? <laughs> uh. Anyway, we're here with Zach Moore, bro. How, how's your day? I'm doing pretty good. I'm just chilling, just hanging out. I'm uh. Just relaxing. It's a nice weekend, you know. I'm just I'm just chilling today, you know. How are you, man? I'm doing fantastic, bro. Like in the introduction, I talked about 
Obviously, Zach has an incident that he went through, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk more about some football, and we're just going to kind of dive into your life. So, you know, first things first, I want to take it back. I want to take it back to when I first met you. I first met you in the seventh grade, and I seen you, and this boy already had a full-grown beard almost out the gate. Oh, yeah. I, genetics, man. Dude, you, know? you had freak genetics from, like, out the <laughs> gate. Bro. And, like, you were mad fast. You know, I mean, I, there was rumors going around school that you were, like, the 10th fastest kid in the nation. You know, like, how did you – is that just – is that was that all just freak genetics? How did you get so damn fast? Uh, well, I – well, my dad played football growing up, and my mom was, like, this – I think she did, like, drill team or something. So it's not like – so I had decent genetics. My dad was, like, played linebacker on defense. And uh, – but, yeah, I just – all growing up, I was just always moving, you know, and I – like, I played baseball since I was four, and I got into football – like in I didn't play I played flag football up until seventh grade, which was a mistake. Really? Yeah. You didn't play Clearwater at all? No, I didn't play Clearwater and I and I def, looking back I definitely should have and I remember it was like you know like that thing in el in a, a, a elementary school where <laughs> uh they have you do like those track things in like oh, sixth yeah. grade and I remember I tried the two hundred in sixth grade and I won and that was when I was at like Centennial Elementary. So that's when I kind of like uh saw my potential as far as like the track thing and then i uh i just ended up being like pretty fast and uh and so but yeah i didn't even realize how fast i was until like going on the field and just get going at it and in flag football and anytime i touched the ball i'd go in for a touchdown you know yeah. and so but yeah um but yeah having uh, my dad's genetics really helped out and just like me always wanting to go hard and yeah, like that I was also always wanted to compete. Yeah. I was I just I just knew I was an athlete, man. I just loved it and and so I just it worked out in my favor. I just ended I uh being fast. It was really cool. And um and running track in seventh grade, I had no idea how where I would be. Like I didn't know I'd win every race and I didn't know that I would be like this sort of like track star, but, yeah. um, but it was really cool. It was, um, I really liked it, uh, but, and I miss it a whole lot and I miss it, but, but yeah, um, running, so running in football, it was like pretty different it, because with like all the pads and everything and, and well, so what yeah. was uh what was kind of your first uh reaction to tackle football and because you played you know obviously flag football until sixth grade when you right. first threw the pads on and it was kind of a different game what was uh did your style change at all Were oh you kind yeah of wake I up was ball like, a little bit? oh me i was like i think i was a kid because that didn't want to get hurt i was like one of those kids but um every now and then like i would find try to find my way around like getting hurt and being able to uh still like lay into some people while trying it's just yeah if i grew up with the mentality of bringing pain to people instead of not bringing pain to myself i would have probably been a whole lot better football player but putting on the pads for the first time was definitely a really new experience for me I, that's why i feel like i should, definitely should have done it before seventh grade but uh but it was a whole lot of fun i I loved it. Like, um, I think when I told, uh, was it Holsher? Was Holsher our coach? Yeah, the head coach. Yeah, yeah. and when I, when I told him, I was like, yeah, I ran fast in those track things in sixth grade. And he's like, fullback. You want to yeah, fullback. Full I was like, oh, okay. And so, yeah, just give me the ball. But, but yeah, I had a lot of fun in junior high. And um, you played defensive end, right? Yeah, defensive yeah. end. It was hard for me to get – because, you know, you were always, like, that freak athlete. You look at – if you look at mine and Zach's high school and junior yeah. high tape, we're two different players. You right, know, you'll, yeah. you'll see him on the field. You'll see me on the sidelines. <laughs> but Zach, like, you know, he was a freak athlete out there. But it was hard for me to get on the field. You found a way. But I just remember in seventh grade, we had, like, 80 kids on the team. Oh, yeah. Everybody wanted to try out. And I remember there was, like uh, – it, it's just I, – I think I remember, like, the – 
like the cutoff from like seventh to eighth was like how many significant oh yeah like, like 80 to 30 what? like or something like that but then the biggest cutoff was from eighth grade to ninth grade oh yeah and we had like 19 kids oh like yeah that. there was definitely a whole lot less in, than in ninth grade than eighth grade um because in seventh grade it's just like all those like parents that just like throw their kids in yeah. and they're like hey you try this out you know and there's just like only half of them are like like somewhat in athletic like barely athletic so it's kind of funny so but um but yeah junior high was really fun um but yeah our coaches we it, it was kind of weird like having we had def three definite different kinds of coaches from All seventh three. to eighth to ninth yeah so i feel like eighth was probably our one of our strongest years but it's just the coaches that we had they were they they kind of like related to us a lot better because yeah. they were younger like uh oh what was it a uh, fr Fr frisbee you know what's funny is uh <clears throat> i posted on facebook and asked if anybody had any questions and he was actually the first person to comment on it and asked who your favorite eighth grade football coach was so that's funny <laughs> that's funny that's funny you brought up that they were your favorite they're my favorite too and i think it, it had to do with them being so young because we there would be practices sometimes where like we would just like he, they just like draft teams and we'd play like six on six yeah. or like five on five yeah. and that was so much fun they play quarterback and stuff oh yeah they it's just they definitely knew how to like work us hard and be serious and they it's just that we did work hard and they were really good at working with us and relating to us and and still having fun at the same time like i remember like I have memories of them like doing like the knuckleball, like th like throwing the ball like sideways or whatever, like yeah. all the time to each other and just having fun with it. And so yeah, that was it was just that's what made it like fun for me at such a young age. It's just that it wasn't just pain and work and grind. It was it was a lot more fun my eighth grade year, and that was when I got to choose my own number too because. Like, I remember in seventh grade, they just said, here, this is yeah. your number. And then, but yeah, eighth grade, yeah, I got to choose my number 32, and I had that for ninth grade, and that was a whole lot of fun. But um, I can't remember, was it eighth grade or ninth, ninth grade? I had my Superman gloves. Oh, that was eight. I, I, had, I had my Superman gloves I think in that was ninth grade. Ninth grade, yeah. But remember in eighth grade, I had my mohawk. Yeah. You remember I had uh, a mohawk in eighth grade? You were so intimidating, dude. <laughs> you, dude, I freaking, like, there, there'd be times I'd see you, and if I wasn't so good friends with you, like, if I'd just seen you walking around, I'd be like, this kid could just beat me up, like, <laughs> with that mohawk, bro. Oh, yeah, I, I love my mohawk. I, and it got long, too. It was a big mohawk. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. definitely, yeah, I def it was, uh, I definitely experimented with my hair in eighth grade because, like, football season, I had that mohawk. And I remember uh, it was for green and gold day for, like, one of those games. I dyed it green. And oh, then I, that, I dyed my mohawk green. And then when I sweated in my helmet, it, like, went all over my face. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I remember that. That was pretty funny. And uh, I remember eighth grade track season, I shaved a Superman symbol in the back of my head. But yeah, this is this is me being a little shit. So like, <laughs> so what I so I want a Superman symbol in the back of my head. My mom asked me. She's like, "Well, why do you want a Superman symbol in the back of your head?" And I was like, "Well, when I run track, it's gonna be the only thing that other people are gonna see uh, is dude, the back of my head." You gotta have that. You gotta have that. <laughs> I was such a little shit just because the year before I was so fast and I was beating everybody. I just had that confidence and and it was in a. But I also had a lot of fun with it and I worked hard and. And so, but yeah, I know that even though I was cocky all the time, it's just I did, I did put the work in and I really yeah, tried did. to like be the best athlete that I could be. So like, yeah, I definitely worked hard in practice a whole lot. Pra track practice like sucked a lot, but especially as a sprinter running those like 10, 200s and stuff when it's the first day, it was crazy. But, but yeah, I, I'm really glad that I got into track and football. So that's really helped me get through junior high and high school pretty good. So, uh, Do you recall your first ever touchdown? In My first third, touchdown? Third, eighth grade? Uh, I think. Or is there a touchdown that sticks out to you the most? Oh, I think there was one that I had in eighth grade. I think oh I, I to look to think back that far I can't really remember but it was like um I think there was one where I it was just like a run play to the right it was like a zone and it was like I think it was my first touchdown 
it was my first touchdown and I remember going up to like Cody Cromer giving him a big hug. Yeah. And um but yeah, the touchdowns I didn't I didn't score a whole lot. I didn't do a whole lot of I did a, a lot better on the defense. Yeah, yeah. I remember defense was like my thing. And um but yeah, I just pounding somebody into the dirt and then like like hearing that exhale. Yeah. That's always super fun, you know, just like pounding somebody else and getting a good tackle in or like a tackle for loss and like one of my favorite things from football was is uh like getting a right read because yeah. like when in the linebacker and you're you're back a little bit and if you get the right read like if you read a screen and you read it right and you tackle them in the backfield tackle for loss that's one of the best feelings that i always that i would always get but but yeah um and also just out running kids too yeah like i remember I uh, I got an interception and I ran super far down the field. I don't know how the the guy tracked me down, but but um, running past people was always fun. Um, yeah, I I really enjoyed seventh and eighth grade football. So I I think part of the you always making good reads is you were always a smart kid too. Like I mean, you you got good grades. You're always up in the classroom. I mean, you know, you put like just about as much effort like in track and football as you did in school. Yeah, I. Um, yeah, and I had like, yeah, I, I, I never really tried to miss a day in school. Like I always tried to get like good attendance and I tried to go at all my classes and like, I don't know, it's just like something just made me like want to go to school and want to go to class and just uh, not miss a class. I don't, I don't know why I was just afraid that I would get in super big trouble if I skipped <laughs> or something like that, but but yeah, I, I wanted to get good grades and I wanted to, because I wanted to stay on the field. Like you get bad grades, can't play football, you know, and yeah. that's pretty much what kind of like kept me in the classroom, kept me learning. And, um, and yeah, and I always did, and I was in those like smart math classes like yeah. I, and, uh, like I was in algebra two in like eighth grade or something like that, I think. But, um, but yeah, I just wanted to work hard in school so I could still be working hard on the field. So that was kind of like motivating me to stay in class, I guess. But, but yeah, so yeah, I really tried just tried my best to um, work hard um, because I if I I knew that if I didn't work hard, I would be. Uh, I knew that my mom would definitely yell at me, and I knew that I'd be like sort of not get my opportunity on the field so that's kind of you know my gist of it so before we uh kind of cap off the junior high talk i gotta ask since i was a wrestler growing up i know you wrestled in seventh yeah. grade what made you give up on that i uh well it's i feel like it was probably the practices for me oh dude they're, they're not they easy. were hell <laughs> the practices were hell man like and it's just like if you want to get in shape quick, yeah. just do like two months of wrestling or something yeah. like that. Like you'll be like throwing up almost like all the time. And it was just it was just so hard because wrestling, it was it just takes all of you, you know. It like does. it's just it's a lot. Like if you look at it, and they're like you're not. It looks like they're not moving a whole lot, and it looks like it doesn't really take a whole lot. But once, but it just it takes you actually getting on the mat and putting all your weight and all your effort into like trying to manhandle some other dude mm -hmm. to realize how hard it is. And, and um, like I even went to a tournament in Spokane. Like I, I think it was during the regular wrestling season. I went to a tournament in Spokane and it was just, it, there was just all these people and all these lights and it was just, it was this was this big thing and it's just I, I don't think I was just ready for it I, yeah. I just didn't I don't I didn't think that I had the mentality for wrestling mm -hmm. um but but yeah I it's just I didn't really enjoy it as much as I, I did track and football you know it's and, hard to enjoy wrestling right yeah. but it's um but I'll but I'll watch it definitely yeah, yeah. it's just um uh, wrestling is cool to watch and I, I definitely respect it you know yeah. it's I respect wrestlers so much like it's super hard and but it's just I didn't really enjoy it very well. But but yeah, I also played five sports in seventh yeah, that's grade. True. Yeah, yeah I did uh, freaking baseball, basketball, track, football, wrestling. 
So yeah, yeah I was just I kind of had to like narrow it down, and I was just like, I want to stick to track and football, and and I played basketball eighth grade, and I I think I ended my baseball career seventh grade just because I wanted to run track, just because. Um, because I was freaking freaking beating everybody in track, yeah. you know, I just wanted to like commit to it and commit uh, just to getting faster and sort of like helping me for the football season. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much why I quit wrestling. So I know, I know that's like that's just like a wrestling thing, but you like look at people and you just look at them and be like, you would have been a great wrestler. That's all I always thought about you. I always looked at you and I was like. Dude, you probably would have been in my weight class. You probably would have took me out of varsity, <laughs> but like you would have been a hell of a wrestler. But I completely get it. You know, the practices think, aren't, aren't easy. Yeah, I should have done it in eighth grade though. I probably should have given it another year. Yeah. But oh well. But yeah. That's the way. That's the way she goes. Yeah, I just didn't really enjoy it very well. So now we get into high school, mm -hmm. and you go into like your track season. Yeah. And eighth and ninth grade, you're beating kids. Seventh grade, eighth grade. You're beating kids. You know, your first year, freshman year, you go to LHS for track, right? Yeah, freshman year, you go to LHS for track. So you go to the go to school at Sacagawea and then take a bus down or take uh, a car ride down to the high school for track. So, yeah, that's what I did. And um, the jump from eighth grade track to ninth grade as you're a freshman going up against freaking seniors and juniors and sophomores – is the freaking biggest jump in sports I'll probably ever have, you know? And, yeah. And it, I remember I went from winning every race to freaking winning barely any races <laughs> in high school. And it was, it hit me hard. I remember my first race, I was thinking like, oh, I'm the shit. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to, and I'm going to beat everybody. And I'm going to be this big, big dog. And I remember it, it definitely humbled me because of that first race I lost. And I think I like stumbled or something. And I, and I was really hard on myself, but it was definitely like a sort of a change in perspective, you know, like going mm -hmm. from um, being top dog to being the bottom of the food chain, you know. So, but I, so yeah, freshman year track, I was still on varsity and I still yeah. tried my hardest and I was still like competing as much as I could, but not winning all those races, you know, definitely changes your perspective a whole lot and. But yeah, and I still and I still enjoyed it, even though practices were definitely a lot, like a lot harder from go, like practicing at the high school with Stuffle and everything. But yeah. nothing against Stuffle, but it's just if you're going from eighth grade track practice to you know high school track practice, it's just a freaking crazy difference. And in football, yeah, football. I was on JV from uh, uh, sophomore. And a little bit of junior year, I played junior. I played JV junior year, and uh, and varsity a little bit. Um, but I had fun with it. The coaches were pretty all right. Uh, Stogue, Sand Stogue, and uh, um, and I'm still friends with um, Coach Jones today. Mike one of, Jones. What, he's one of the best people I've probably ever met. Oh yeah, life. probably yeah, definitely top ten best people like ever. You know, like yeah, and like I go to go to the high school today. Stop, got to stop by and say hi. Like I know, like, and he's just um, like even in track too because he was the throwing. Coach. He's the throwing yeah. coach in track, so I get to see him twice a year. You know, and it was just that also really helped me, and it's really nice to have those coaches that really connect with you on a personal level and really such a nice guy and he was a really great, great guy. guy and um so um you know I, I like coaches that just care about their players and i think like i never had a coach a head coach anything like that that cared about their players so much as oh, yeah. jones did yeah and he's so funny too. yeah yeah he's, he's hilarious. hilarious dude did you know here's a here's a fun story about jones that he told me well uh he actually went on a double date in college with Calais Campbell. No. Yeah, he went on a double date in college with Calais Campbell. Calais Campbell. What? How do you, well, how do you pull that off? Dude? Well, I guess – I don't know. I don't really truly remember the whole story. Right. Yeah. Jones, if you're listening to this, you got to tell Zach this Yeah. Story. <laughs> but I just – I remember it was uh, after – he was still playing for the Cardinals, I think, our sophomore year. He got – and he picked off Peyton Manning, and he got it to, like, the two-yard line because Manning tackled him. Yeah. And he was telling me – I was asking, I was like, just that. He's like – I went on a double date with him one time, and I think like uh, like the girl that he was going on a date with, her like best friend or sister or something was like like went to Miami. Oh, 
Oh. And that's where uh, Calais went. Oh, yeah. So they both, like, met up at this restaurant in, like, Moscow, and then he meets Calais Campbell. Jeez. Dude, six foot seven. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, Beast of a man, you yeah. know? And just in Moscow? That's nuts, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Just going on a double date with Calais Campbell. It was so fu- It's so funny now seeing, like, teachers and, like, a people in public, like, and other places, like the other day, I went to Liberty Mart and I was buying beer, and I saw one of our old teachers there, <laughs> and I was like, Dude, "This is uh, so weird." I was like, I, I went up to him like, "This is about to be a real awkward interaction, bro." But uh, and then and then, he, and then I'm not I'm not gonna say his name or anything, but he right. was buying like a thirty rack, and I was like, "All right, cool." And I was buying a six pack. I was behind him, and he's like, "He's like." The Jags aren't playing today. Why do you need a six pack? I was like, I was like, it's a Thursday afternoon. You have school tomorrow. Why do you need a thirty? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my gosh, I I haven't bought any sort of like beer in front of uh, uh, other teachers yet. Yeah. But I did run into a teacher's husband at the bar the other day. Yeah. And he bought me a drink. So nice. that was pretty fun. That was pretty weird, I guess. But it was all right. But I, I bet you teachers try to avoid the bar at all cost. Because you know you're gonna see like some kids that you taught or like something like that. Oh yeah, I saw a substitute I saw a couple substitute teachers at the bar the other day and they were kinda like um I my parents were telling me that they, they know you and they recognize you. They're just um, and I was like, do you, do you remember them? I was like, yeah, I remember them. Was, but I didn't really talk to them. Just they yeah. were doing their own thing and everything. But, um, but yeah, they still go. And, and so, but if, I guess it would only be weird if I didn't really have a great relationship with them in, in high school or something. Yeah. But like, if I had like a, like, I think it would be the greatest thing if I saw like, like a. I don't know, like Jones at the bar. Yeah. Like yeah. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, just and hanging I'd, out I'd with, love him. To have beer with them. And Same. So, but yeah, I need to I need to get on that soon. So. Dude, what a, what am I like? Like my geology teacher, and like I, I like didn't have a relationship with her at all. I just showed up to class, and just did took my notes, didn't talk to her oh, ever yeah. really. Oh yeah. Ran into her at Rosars, and she's like. I love your YouTube channel, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? You subscribed to my YouTube channel? She's like, she's like, I watch every video. You do such a good job. I'm like, oh. I mean, that's cool. And I was like, that's so weird. You know? <laughs> but I guess I do, I do a lot of, I do a lot of promotion. But yeah, um, going back to football a little bit, you weren't really in the, you know, with the positions you played, you were never in like the easiest situation to be a starter of varsity because you obviously oh. had Mason ahead of you, who was right. a freak. Oh yeah, two way player. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then going up against him in drills, you know, yeah. like he just humili- him, <laughs> humiliates you, so it's yeah. just hard to, like, get, like, a starting job and everything. Like, I remember going up to, against him in pass-blocking drills. Oh, my God, it's the freaking worst. Yeah. But um, I was sort of okay with it in that sort of aspect just because I knew that he was better than me, you know, at that yeah. point. Um, but it was also kind of cool having him as a mentor and uh, – and he kind of helped me just a little bit with like a couple things, you know, and, um, but yeah, I, I was, but yeah, going up and I really just tried to show my speed and just show my strengths and drills and just, and I really tried to, like when I was put in the games, like I remember junior year when I'd be putting games, like, uh, I remember I had a decent game in Lake City where I had a couple tackles for loss and I was pretty proud of myself and I just, when I was on the field, I just did what I could, and um, I didn't get a whole lot of playing time on varsity junior year. Um, but I. Uh, it was hard for a lot of juniors. Oh, yeah. Year. Right. It, it was. But just because I think. Didn't like all the seniors play? Yeah. All when the, we were yeah. all juniors? Like the whole. Like when I was a lineman, like the whole offensive line and defensive line, except for Dustin. Yeah. Like we're, we're seniors. Starters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Senior starters. Yeah. So, but I. Uh, but yeah, being a linebacker, be, um, junior year. Well, we had. So didn't Skinner come in junior year? Yeah, he came in junior. Yeah, year. so having him junior and senior year was um, pretty all right. I mean, like him as like a coach, as far as like showing me techniques and drills was cool. But as far as like the old um, Skinner mentality, it was just I kind of like handled it as much as I could. Dude, it, it, I hope yeah. he doesn't listen to it, but it was hard, it was hard sometimes because, I mean, like, dude, 
I never had him as a coach, but like he'd just like go out of his way to like not not necessarily even mess with me, just like to oh, like yeah. actually be a dick. Oh yeah, like, he's a <laughs> prick. Yeah, he would try to just go out of his way to just be like the biggest prick he could. Yeah, and, but so it was in that aspect, it was kind of hard to handle. But yeah. having him as a sort of like techniques coach kind of helped me as a linebacker and helped me with like uh, helped me with reads. And I feel like the guy who helped me the most is definitely. Nielsen like yeah coach Nielsen definitely helped me the most as far as my senior year because when I had him as a teacher's aide I had him as a teacher's aide in um uh for map uh my senior year and what what he'd have me do is that he'd have me watch game film like yeah. the whole time he'd have me watch game film on reading the old line and reading like on counters and who would pull and who would um like and just read like trying to tell like uh which play it would be before the play would happen like if like if the linemen are like freaking on their front hand, then it's probably going to be a run play. Or if they're leaning back super far, it'd be a pass play. Or yeah. just trying to like read which lineman's going to pull and and reading screens and stuff like that. So Coach Nielsen was really a really good mentor for me as a linebacker and as far as like a football player and help helping us out in the lock in the weight room and you know, that was uh, that was a pretty big help and and he was pretty personable too and yeah. he was a really cool guy and and so and he had like a lot on his plate too and he connected mm -hmm. with everybody and and so it's just that it wasn't like it's not that it was like a super special connection with everybody mm -hmm. but i i feel like he tried um uh, i feel like he tried pretty good as far as like connecting with everybody and helping everybody out but but yeah that's what being a linebacker being a linebacker it was pretty Sitting behind a little bit kind of really helped me my senior year just because helped me learn as far as um, learning my duties and learning what my responsibility is and kind of just helped me out along the way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, to cap off kind of like the football and the track discussions, um, let's take it back to senior year football. Senior when year. we were on top of the damn world, when we went to that jamboree, we beat Highland. Oh yeah. And we went I think we went undefeated. We went undefeated, yeah, undefeated in the regular season. All 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 nine and oh man. Nine yeah. and oh baby. Yeah, dude, that was probably my dude, it's weird. I'd say eighth grade football is probably my favorite season of football yeah, I ever right. played, but senior year football was like a close second. Oh yeah, definitely. And you, um, you were you were a starter on that. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. I was starter, yeah. yeah. Def I feel like Highland was our best game. Oh, it was so much fun. Dude. Oh it was yeah, like, it was uh, like everybody was on their A game, you know. Yeah. Like, like I remember like Braden making one handed catches. Oh my and, god, dude! When he f decided to play football that year, dude, oh he yeah, was just, it was a huge help. And, yeah, and, and, and like, it's like I remember I I had a screen. I read a. I I like what I was saying earlier, like reading screens and stuff. I remember I had one of those that game, and and they were like the favorites, right? Like they, but like yeah, they were they were far and away. Oh yeah, just because. Didn't they have like the most state championships in like the past? Yeah, and they had like a Ohio State commit on the defensive line. Yeah, like I remember that. Like they had like this big guy, like this big prospect or whatever the yeah. hell. And and so we go in, like, and we're in their house and we're looking at them warm up and and it's just we know what we are and we went in and totally dominated. We yeah. it was such a good game. It was high scoring, right? We yeah. scored like fifty points. It's like fifty one to fifty four or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, like, like we we definitely sort of just like played our best. And I remember, I remember that was probably probably one of our best games. And and that and it was such a long drive too. Like it was such a long trip. Like the yeah. day before going there and staying in Montana and. Like it was just this big thing, first game of the year, and um, but yeah, to go into Highland, it was that was a whole lot of fun, um, and just pretty much that whole season, you know. And uh, my my favorite, I feel like my favorite game was post falls, but really? just because because it was my best performance. Yeah. Um, like I remember, my favorite play was it was on a fourth down. They were trying to convert a fourth down. Uh, and like the red zone or something, and then they send a double linebacker blitz. Me and Ben, me and Ben up more. Yeah. And Ben goes into one gap, and the running back takes him. So it's just all me, and it's just me and the QB, and I just freaking sprint right at him and sack him, and I and I get a sack on fourth down, and I remember just jumping up and like, Wah! yeah, and it was tired. just awesome. And, 
but yeah, senior senior season of football was really fun, and being able to play all, so much in all those games, and and uh, it was a whole lot of fun. You remember the Coeur d'Alene game? I was gonna say that was probably pound for pound my favorite game because yeah. I remember that was a uh, that was the first time we beat Coeur d'Alene in like oh yeah eight years. Eight years. Yeah, and we did it our ho- our home turf, and it was like homecoming. I think. It was yeah. Uh, or and it was we, raining really bad. Oh yeah, the, the mud. field was muddy. They faked a punt on like yeah. fourth and two. Oh yeah. Troy got the tackle. They didn't get it. Like no. I remember. I know that score. That was fifty four to fifty one. Yeah, I remember that score. That was huge, and I was on the last, and I was on the field the last play of the game. Like it was a QB tried to scramble, and it was a fake punt, dude. It, it was wild. It was like a fourth and two, and they fake punted it. Yeah, like, yeah. And, then, and I just remember like all of us like holding him and like letting the clock run out. And I remember just all of us just screaming. And I remember like watching a video of Colton just jumping up and down yeah. as high as he could, and it was just. Like, as far as, like, satisfaction, you know, yeah. that was probably the best satisfactory game. Because I remember I played a whole lot. I remember, I pl- like, during that game, what I'm saying is that yeah. I, I remember that I had a lot of game playing time in the trenches and in the mud and just being on, like, defense, trying the best I could, you know. And But, yeah, as far as, like, satisfaction wins, that was probably probably one of the top things. And, and so beating Coeur d'Alene our senior year, I mean, that was probably like went yeah just went in our lead, uh, inland empire league yeah that was so much fun and um, yeah I, I really enjoyed that and so yeah I loved high school football it it came to a crushing end though yeah freaking, freaking <laughs> we, Rocky Mountain dude. dude oh my god two years in a row two years dude. in a row it's just I don't think they passed the ball the whole game they passed the ball I went dude the other day because I work at the trim or whatever I was I pulled up the box score from that. Yeah. Game, dude. The quarterback was zero for one, zero yards, and they ran the ball. The they rest ran of the, the ball game. the whole game. Yeah, yeah. And, be- and I remember they're they had down like, to like their third string quarterback. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, didn't they have uh, like? And their running back was fast too. Yeah, like he could, like he ran track, and he was like, I think he was like state champ or mm-hmm. something like that. But yeah, we just we just could not stop, like, could not stop the run. They had like a. Like a beast O line, yeah, and great like, line, yeah. and was just they just ran it all over us. We couldn't really. I I don't really remember much from that game. Yeah, it was just but yeah, it sucked. Terrible. And I I hate Rocky Mountain so much. Yeah, dude, just because uh, of that. Uh, uh, how did how did your track? Because I never did track. So how did your track career pan out senior year? Senior year track was probably one of the most fun. Like, probably the most fun I had in sports, just because. I uh, I had my flow. I had my flow going. Oh, and your was, beautiful long oh, hair! I loved my long hair, Dude. and I uh, and I was captain. Well, we, it was kind of like we all had co-captains. It was like three guy captains and three female captains, and uh, but I was kind of like top dog though, and everybody yeah. knew me as cap as the captain. And it was me and Troy and uh, and Ty Austin. I ran Ty Austin to track, and and all of us, and we just had we. We worked hard, and we really worked hard during practice and put our work in, but we tried to make it, like, the most fun. Like, we tried to have our best time, and we – and, like, going down – and, like, like during practice, I would always, like, um, try to make it the most fun for everybody. Like, I would try to connect with the underclassmen and just let them know that um, – to try to have their best time there and and just connect with people and – and um, senior, it was so fun because um, during practice, like it would just be um, like these super easygoing uh, times. Like when we would on Fridays, like when we were supposed to like do this thing where we'd have to go on a twenty-five minute run, like a, a, around LC, and whoever would run with me, we would do this thing where like we would just like go to LC and like take a right just run downtown and just like go through hills and like have all this fun, like through streets and stuff like that. Like we would just, we would just have fun with it. And, um, we would be messing around. Like I remember it was just like me, um, my buddy Carlos and Troy and, and a whole bunch of us, we would just in, and we, we competed and we were all pretty good. And, and I loved, and it was, and it was definitely my best year as far as running. Like I ran like an eleven six nine in the hundred, and I ran a twelve three five and in the two hundred, and it was uh, not twelve three five twenty three five in the two hundred, and it was just 
I, and that was the year um, Coach Stuffel came back. Yeah. So he quit like sophomore and junior year, and then he came back senior year for a coach. And to have Coach Stuffel back for my senior year and just helping me out throughout the long way and me helping those kids out as much as I can and being the captain, it was it was really, really fun. And it made my the capping off my senior year just super wholesome and great. And um, and I had all my best times and I didn't really I didn't make it to state though. I didn't yeah. um, and one of those relays where um, it was like a four by two or something like that. We kind of like, we were, uh, we ran up short making it to state, but I still had probably the best time connecting with my friends and track and it was super fun and, and I competed as much as I could and, and I, and I, and I have pictures of me with my super in my, everybody called me like a Viking because I'd have like yeah, a ponytail but, yeah. and I'm like my, my facial hair and all that stuff. And people say I look like a Viking and it's just, I love my mentality just like, and I just, I, I remember, I remember my build and my long hair and my beard. I loved it. And yeah. I just loved my mentality and I, and I had fun with it. And that was probably the biggest thing that I took away from it is I, I had a lot of fun with it. So, so now you're graduated, you're out of high school. What, what was, uh, what did you do out of high school? What was your first initial plans? All right. So I, uh, yeah, so I stayed home like uh, summer after senior year and I went, so it was my, I went to LCSE for one year um, after high school and I, and I lived on campus mm -hmm. and I, and I had like, and I didn't really have like a major. I just had like my general classes, like general studies and, and cause I didn't really want to know. I, I knew I wanted to go to school but I didn't really know what I wanted to go to school for, and I didn't have a job, and I didn't have a job yet, and because I I got enough scholarships to um, pay for me living on campus and for my tuition for my freshman year, so I was like, hey, and and I was it was recommended for me to stay on campus. Mm -hmm. Like my plan was to stay at home, and yeah. so I had an advisor tell me that it was a pretty good idea to stay on campus because it would it would make me uh, proactive as far as like going to classes and getting good grades. And so I, I went to LCSC for a year and I lived in Talkington hall and I lived on the top floor and I had my, I was 18 years old and my two roommates were 21 year old Dominican baseball players. <laughs> oh yeah. And like, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's and, LCS. It's fine. Oh yeah. Like one of them was a major stoner, yeah. like major stoner, like smoked every day. And he would, and he didn't have a car. So he would ask me to drive him to the dispensary yeah. every single day to get every a freaking, day. Oh my God. And, but it's just me like being like that young and going into there and we, in it was one of those dorms where we all lived in the same room, yeah. like three guys in one room. Like there was no like separate rooms or anything. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. One room. Like, oh just yeah. Like, just like this. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we had to like, and we had to share like a shower with, um, like all the guys in the same hall. Yeah. Like it was like a, and it was, we, there was only like two toilets and, it was it was crazy. Like my living like that, my my first freshman year was nuts. Like it really sort of like put me in perspective as far as like my own personal space. Like I'm de you know, like living after that. I'm like I'm definitely getting an apartment after this. Like yeah. freaking fuck that shit. But um, I lived on campus. I partied a lot. Yeah, when you live <laughs> on campus, I would assume that kind of comes with it. Well, yeah, but it's just I became friends with. Uh, like uh, Zion and Nate, and I would go up to, I would go up to Pullman and like and go to Stubby's and all that stuff. Yeah, and I definitely did not sort of pay attention in school as much as I should have, and I skipped. And I started skipping classes, and um, and I started going to work. Like I got that job at Rogers, and yeah. I started working a lot and uh, hanging out with my friends on the weekends. So school kind of just wasn't didn't really become my top priority yeah. um but yeah so i definitely just had a whole lot i met a whole lot of new fun people and i met a whole lot of great people and i uh, loved my first year of college and lived on campus and it went 
partied a lot on the weekends and but never got into any sort of like trouble though but, yeah i mean i feel like because for you i mean in high school it was all school it was all sports i feel like once you kind of got out of that mentality that was kind of like you needed a little bit of party time yeah because I, like. I, I, I didn't party in high school yeah yeah I, which is like i remember like because uh, I didn't go to like any super big parties in high school. Like I remember, like my junior year, I'd go over to Cameron's a couple times and we'd drink in his basement. And, yeah, that's but, and, and then that's yeah. it. But go, having that sort of like that year of me time, like yeah. me like hanging out with my friends and going to like parties and stuff like that, that was it was I had a lot of fun with that. And just after a whole life of just working hard and because I wasn't in any sports and I didn't yeah. play football after high school and. And I wasn't, and I didn't really Did have any like, offers anywhere to play in sports. No, I didn't really get, I didn't really get any offers. No, and and I was alright with it. I was yeah. a small guy. I mean, it was fine, and I didn't really have any plans to play after high school. I definitely should have played for like the loggers or something. I, I've th I thought about it so many times, dude. I they're, I, they're terrible, but I've thought about it. Looking them. back, like now that I can't do it anymore, like looking back, I definitely would should have done it. But it's all right, you know, and. Um, um, but yeah, and so I didn't have that sort of focus, right? So it's just, I wanted to focus my time on work and friends. So that's basically what ended up happening. So, uh, did you drop out of school or did you stay in? Yeah. My second semester, I dropped a couple classes and I didn't really finish the semester. Uh -huh. So I, and so what I did is that after, after the term, I, um, I moved back in with my mom, but then after like a month or two, I got my apartment. So yeah. I was living with Riley and I got, and I just got my apartment and I, and I had, and I had really good like ex expenses too. Like, and like my rent was cheap just cause I was like sharing it, you know, yeah. and, I, and I had a really good spot, really good apartment and really good. And it was a good job. I was working my way up and, uh, but then, yeah, unfortunately my accident happened in, in July of 2018. I was, uh, went to the beach and it was, and it wasn't like this total like super weird situation so before we get into that i kind of one thing i wanted to ask you before we got into like you know your whole incident yeah and ask you questions about that what's the because you know when it first happened like i was shocked you know i didn't i i heard just so much different things from a mm -hmm. lot of people and i was actually looking at one of my uh, youtube videos and uh back when that happened in july of 2018 like i was upset like that got mm -hmm. me and you know like a lot of people are saying a lot of different things. What yeah. was like the most, I guess, popular misconception that you heard of like what happened during your injury, if there was one? Well, like I, um, I think a lot of people were saying that like I dove like off of a rock, like like I dove down, like and people were saying that I was like, like I was partying or something like that, and I was drinking or anything. But I, I don't think I heard any sort of. You probably heard some more weird stories than I did. Yeah. But like, what basically how it all went down is that I was just I went there to meet a girl and uh, and it was we were having a good time and and I didn't I wasn't drinking at all like I was like I was stone cold sober and she was drinking a little bit so I was like hey I might need to drive her home so I was thinking like hey stay sober just have a decent time and and it was just a few of us at the beach and and I was just we were just swimming and I just run out into the sand. And then the just boom, and it was, and I, and apparently it was like there was like a sandbar there or something like that. So it's not like I dove down, I just dove out, and it was just it was just a freak accident, you know. And it's, um, it it could have happened like, be, it could have happened to pretty much like anybody, you know. And um, and I've, uh, but I think. Like what's like what what were some weird stories that you heard about like what happened to me? Like, well, at first I heard you. First, the first one that like got me was I heard you died. Like, I, I died. Damn. That's I heard that. <laughs> that was like what that was like one of the first things I heard. And I, and this is, you know, news to me too because I I thought you did die from a rock. That's uh, that's that's something that I heard and I thought that, that was true. Yeah. And uh, so so what happened was you were in the in the water and you just dove in like in, into the water and then you hit a sandbar like on your head. Yeah, it was it was sand, man. I yeah. hit sand. It was nuts. Like I was running. I must have been running pretty good, you know. Like yeah. so I was just running out straight and and I just and I just kind of dove like horizontally, but I guess the water was just too shallow and I hit like a sand lump or something like that and. Um, and yeah, and uh, had enough force to to break my neck, and um, 
and I'm and thank God there was there was people there to help me and there was people there to know that I wasn't joking around the messing around and hopefully they didn't leave me there and and um, definitely would have died if it weren't for them and they they put me on the sand and laid me on my back and just called the ambulance and everybody did great like, taking care of me as far as like that and so yeah de not dead no yeah dead, that, but, that um, was that was the first one so um when you dove and you hit it were you kind of like you couldn't move no it yeah. was it was just immediate boom like a light switch like I, it didn't knock me out yeah. um like so i was awake and i was holding my breath just waiting for somebody to come get me probably the scariest 15 seconds of my life yeah but like i opened my eyes and i was like holy shit and it was because like i remember like my arms were like above my head just because i couldn't move them and everything um so yeah it was from then on couldn't move couldn't feel so they laid me on my back and my buddy jesse was there he was kind of like rubbing my chest a little bit kind of like to comfort me and i could feel that so that was like hey that's something but yet uh my friend was like holding my hand and i couldn't feel her so but yeah it was just an immediate change and um but yeah, I was breathing on my own. I was awake and I, and I didn't hit my head. Well, I didn't hurt my head. And so I was conscious and just trying to, you know, looking up at everybody, just trying to let everybody know that I was going to be okay and trying to stay calm as much as I could. And, you know, just mm -hmm. like when the paramedics got there, I was trying to be like as cooperative to them as much as I could. And, and so, but yeah, it was a crazy story. It was crazy what happened is freak accident. You know, and uh, it's just, it's nobody's fault, you know. I mean, I could have ran out further, but, hey, it could have happened to anybody. So, and it's not like, and I know, and I know that um, I really can't change what happened, and it's all right. And and I'm living with it, and I'm doing pretty all right with it. When, and they uh, they tell me, so, like, what happened was is I go to the hospital, and so my doctor looks at my MRI, and like he sees how messed up my neck is and he tells me he says um uh he says you're not going to recover from this so he's like he's like in this type of situation i don't really don't see any recovery and i'm like all right well that's not really what i want to hear but all right and uh i was given a choice do i do surgery here or do i have to or do i go on a two-hour ambulance ride to spokane to do surgery there and they would have to like uh, put me in like this sort of like like tong thing like to like in like this halo or whatever to just put my neck in it stabilized my neck for like two hours on an ambulance ride and I was like fuck that dude I'm doing my surgery now yeah and so it was it ended up being a perfect surgery in Lewiston which I'm super thankful for and my neurosurgeon, it, it ended up being his very last surgery. Yeah. Like, he retired after my surgery. Oh, really? It was nuts, yeah. And so, but yeah, he did a perfect job. And I ended up going to the perfect place in in uh, Denver, Colorado, the perfect rehab pl uh, place, uh, Craig Hospital. And I was very well taken care of. And I was put in the best position um, to have a great recovery. And if not for my neurosurgeon taking the time under repairing my neck, I wouldn't end up being um, as good as I am today because he took all the pressure off my spinal cord. And, and so I learned so much through this whole process about my body and how it works and how to get better and how to um, improve. And it's, it's been the craziest sort of past two years of my whole life. And it's been it's been really nuts so far, and I'm sure it'll probably keep going. But I'm looking at every day. I'm taking every day one day at a time, you know, and I'm and I'm getting better and I'm improving. And what I say, a little bit of progress is still progress, you know. Forward yeah. is forward. So that's what me and my mom say. So, so uh, take it back to when the doctor originally said. Uh, you know, there's no way you're going to recover from this. Yeah. You know, and you kind of, you kind of brush it off saying like, you know, that's not what I want to hear, but what mm. was, what was actually going on in your head when you heard that? Oh yeah. I was, I definitely, I definitely was pretty like freaking out, you know, like you, cause like to hear that, yeah. knowing that you won't be able to like in that moment, like when I am still couldn't feel or move anything 
thinking about that I won't be able to do like I like I won't be able to throw a football again or I won't be able to like just freaking move my body like just kind of like soaking that all in is it's tough you know and it's it's um it's definitely life changing like it'll definitely change you you as far as your outlook on life and basically your perspective as far as like the way you talk to people the way you ask for things and everything like like me i was like a sort a very sort of like a selfless guy like i didn't really want to ask people for anything like i wanted to do stuff for people i wanted to offer to do things like i wanted to pay for people's taco bell and i wanted to pay for people's dutch and i wanted people to give people rides and and just to be put in that situation from going to being completely independent like i was living on my own and i was paying for my own stuff and i was making money and i was doing all these things and i didn't really need anybody from from going to being completely independent to being completely dependent on other people, you know, it's, it's hard. And, um, yeah, and when he told me that I wouldn't recover, it was, it was really hard on me and, and, um, and dealing with it, those, for those first, I don't know, for the very initial sort of like day or two was really hard, but coming out of my surgery, I, uh, my surgery was like five hours. Mm -hmm. And so coming out of my surgery, it was like the day after and the next couple of days, I had very slight feeling yeah. like I like I could barely feel some like things like throughout my whole body. And so I knew that I had something, you know, like it yeah. was like having that. It was kind of like a little bit of hope, you know, mm -hmm. like like I remember, like if you could like rub my foot, like I could feel it. And I was like, holy shit, I can feel that. Mm -hmm. And so having that really really helped me get through it so like just having that sort of like little spark of hope was like oh yeah i got this you know like i can like i can do this and so and then i remember a couple of days after i was able to like twitch my arms a little bit mm -hmm. so just having those little bit so th those little accomplishments just like being able to lift my arm off the pillow like an inch just having those little tiny like sparks and accomplishments really helped me get through it like, oh, I can do that, then I can do this, and then I can do that, and just and it just kept going. And I'm still doing that today, you know, yeah. and so just getting through it day by day so far. So, you know, all these tiny little accomplishments, I mean, is is that really what you contribute, like, your attitude towards? Because, I mean, from when I saw you last, you know, before the incident, mm -hmm. and then when I see you now, I still see the same person yeah. just sitting in the chair. Like, do you think, like, is that really what motivates you to maintain a positive attitude through all, all of this? Yeah, well, I just, well, through this, I just kind of don't really want this to define who I am, you know, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I just still try, um, I still want to try to be the me throughout yeah. this whole thing. I still want to try to be as positive as I can because it's just nobody, nobody likes a negative Nancy, you know, yeah. like, and I feel like, when like if people see you in this sort of situation and they see you smile and they see that you want to get better and they see that you want to help other and they and they see that you want to like get better as far as like work and they want to see you like if they see you work as much as you do and they see you work as hard as you do and see you smile like that and, it's just it make it brings people to you and it and it kind of just inspires people but me but basically what it is for me is just that I want to be me and I don't want to and I want people to see me as this guy in a wheelchair I still want people to see me as Zach and so I really try to be like as normal as possible and and I always like and I was uh, always a positive guy and I always, always wanted to have fun with things you know and so I really try to be as positive as I can today you know mm -hmm. and 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 it is hard like sometimes you know like I do have days where like this shit sucks yeah like and I'm just like had some days I really do have a struggle and stuff but I really try my best to not let it really affect my sort of like attitude as far as like my everyday life I really try to my best to be the best me and 
and it is and it's okay to have a down day and, and i've realized that and i've realized that it's okay to to just be human you know yeah exactly. because and so and um but yeah i do have a hard day every now and then but i really try my best to have the best days that i can uh, as much as possible so but yeah uh, my mentality going through it is that those those little sparks of hope really do help with my attitude like with like i remember that i was when i started moving my legs for the first time after my injury like i started like flexing my quad or something like that i was like oh my god i'm actually doing this and it was just like like i'm actually going to get through this you know and i've just built on it and i just keep getting better as much as i can so but yeah definitely that helps with the positive attitude but it, it just kind of like helps each other like my yeah. pos my strong positive attitude helps me get through my recovery and me achieving those small little goals really helps my positive attitude so it kind of just feeds off each other and i'm also supported with like the greatest one of the greatest support systems you know it's just like i have great friends and uh, i got like my a great family and so i'm really blessed to have that uh, throughout this whole uh, process so it's just been really nice and so far and and it, and it brought me to my love for football again you know yeah, yeah and so like being going to denver and being uh, brainwashed by all those broncos and now mm -hmm. i'm a and now i'm a diehard broncos fan so but yeah you know, so it brought me back to my love for football and then everything so i guess that and i so i take those small things away from it and mm -hmm. um so yeah it really helps me get through it you know and honestly that's a beautiful story to say why you're a broncos fan like oh yeah, go, going through all that and saying you know you spent all that time in Denver and you're a Broncos fan. But um, what's I guess what's the it's the what's the goal that is there? You know, is there a possibility for you to be you know back to where you were or what's yeah. kind of what is the goal for you? Yeah, so like as far as like what I look at it right now, um, I'm definitely going to need help, yeah. uh, like a little bit of help uh, down the road. I feel like my eventual goal is to be somewhat where I was like, let, let's say if I got like my own apartment and I would, what I basically need is just somebody to come help me get me up in the mornings and help me out with like my meals and a little bit of stuff like that. So I'd say that my goal is to try to be as independent as I can. Mm -hmm. Like I really want to try to get like a small job and I really want to try to do find a way for me to like get transportation and um and a place to live so it's just i'm really trying to get like f uh, work myself towards like one thing at a time and i guess down the road i just really want to be as independent as i can like um like today like these things i really try to be like feed my i really try to feed myself as much as i can like like if i'm like if like if i'm eating something that like if it's something that like pretty much the only thing that I really can't feed myself is like soup. Yeah. Cause that shit's hard when yeah, you can't I, really hold like, and so, so if I'm eating anything that I can't eat, I will eat, I will feed myself. And if, and if there's anything that I can do to do for myself, I can. Um, and so that's basically what I'm trying to work towards as far as, is sort of just supporting myself mm -hmm. and being, um, in sort of just like an independent sort of state as much as I can. So that's basically what a, one of uh, my goals is, is just to be as independent as possible going forward. So, yeah. All right. And, you know, that's, that's awesome. And I think a lot of people can take, you know, a lot of positive takeaways from that. And I guess I appreciate you coming on here and, you know, telling your story, you know, I think, uh, so you did you did get something on the news, didn't you? Or yeah, yeah, I um uh Rashida yeah uh, probably interviewed interviewed yeah. me a little a little bit and yeah. um she was really nice and I uh and they and I I can't really remember what I said. Yeah. But yeah, I think I said something like I don't know how long it takes, it's just I'm gonna walk again or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um but yeah, I'm just gonna right now I look at it as I know that not every single day is going to be a super big step going forward. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm going to be, um, and not every single day is going to be a super big, um, um, sort of like big step. And not every day is going to be an improvement, but as long as it's forward, it's forward. So, I mean, I'm, uh, 
I'm taking every day. I'm I'm gonna do like I'm taking every day as it is, and and so I'm really trying my hardest to improve as much as I can, and so, but yeah, it's so I know it's a marathon and not a sprint, mm -hmm. and I know it's gonna be a slow process. So I'm just really gonna be doing my best as far as recovering through the whole thing. So, but yeah, and it's been quite a journey so far and it's going to be um and it's still going to be going on for a long time so i just, i'm just trying to still be the best me that i can be you know mm -hmm. so yeah what's uh somebody find yourself themselves in a similar situation to you what's the biggest piece of advice that you give them oh like is if somebody um is like in a similar situation to me it's just really my biggest piece of advice would be to really think about the people around you as far as like who cares about you and who really um, wants to help you. Like if you see, like if you see someone that wants to help you, it'd be a really good idea to let them help you just because it, it'll just help them. And, um, and also like it would just don't really try to let something like this change who you are. And so just try to be the best you that you can be, you know, that's, that's basically one of the things that I've taken away from it is that I just don't want this to define me and I don't want this to change who I am. So, because it can be, because something like this can, can really change you if you let it, you know, yeah. like it, because it, it, because of how big it is and how life changing it is. So, and, and I know that it can be really hard for probably somebody else. So, I mean, I guess my advice would be that just to be the best person that you can be throughout a really hard time. Mm -hmm. So that's basic because that's what it is. It's hard, but you just got to be the best person you can be. All right. So we did get some questions from some people on YouTube and Twitter for you. But before we do that, there's actually one more question I have for you that you told me last time you were here. And I yeah. want and I want you to kind of share with the people. Mm. There's a rumor going around that you talked to John Elway. I did. <laughs> yes, I did talk to John Elway. Um, so, um, you want me to just tell like the whole story? Yeah, tell the whole story. All right, so. I'm just going to go grab yeah, it. All right, yeah, so my stepmom, Tara, works for uh, PK Metals here in Lewiston. It's a lead distributor. It's a big company, and so it was last year in October. It was my dad's birthday. And so my mom, uh, my stepmom's uh, boss, invited the three of us out to MJ Barley Hoppers to watch the World Series or something like that. And so yeah, we go, we go, and we're hanging out. And I meet, and I meet her boss, and uh, and he was like, um, "So are you a big baseball guy?" And I was like, "No, I'm not really keeping up on baseball. I'm just been." Um, but I'm a huge football guy, and I watch a lot of football. And he's like, well, yeah, what's your team? And I was like, uh, I'm a Denver Bronco fan. And he's like, oh, wow, that's cool. Uh, he's like, well, I golf with John Elway. Isn't that such a weird thing? Yeah. Like, like, and Lewis did, I know. Right. Yeah, I just golf with John Elway. Yeah, yeah. like I just golf with him. So <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, uh, cool. That's nice, man. Uh, that's awesome. And then he's like, uh, and then so we're talking. He's like, yeah, let me get your picture, and I'll send it to him. And and I was just letting you know, let him know that you said hi. And it's just like, oh, uh, I was like, oh, uh, oh, sweet, thanks, yeah. man, that's that's awesome. And thank God I was wearing a Bronco shirt under my sweatshirt. Yeah. So it's just like perfect opportunity, you know, just you know, give a big old smile and, yeah. and don't really, and, I'm, and I didn't really say anything. So, uh, yeah, and he, so he sends him a picture, and and then he just goes home that night because it was like late or something like that, but. But yeah, so John uh, messages him back uh, the day after, and he's like, he's like, hey, the, the next time you see Zach, uh, just um, uh, just call him or call me, and then uh, I want I want to talk to him. And so my stepmom uh, grabbed me on her lunch break the next day and brought me to work, and I um, and I got to FaceTime John Elway. Uh, the John Elway for five <laughs> minutes and it was awesome. It was so cool. He's he's such a normal guy and he's such a personable guy and it was super cool talking to him and we kind of like talked about like Lewiston a little bit. He said he um, would take bus rides down here from Pullman and play basketball and and he's such a personable guy and he was showing me like 
how it was like snowing on the on the practice field and uh, we were talking to him, and I was and I was telling him about how I became a Bronco fan as far as like how it really because I went to a couple preseason games when I was in Colorado yeah um and I the second preseason game I went to I was on like the 50 yard line on the front row yeah. behind the Bears bench and it was probably one of the best experiences of my life and so I just told him how that really helped me get through my recovery my initial recovery and he thought that was really cool and he said hey next time you're in town then uh let me know and i'll get you tickets to a game so hopefully have uh, john elway offer you tickets to a broncos game, hopefully dude. that That's would crazy. be oh my gosh being just call up my buddy john again yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah hey. john elway heard of him <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i heard of that guy Jeez, but yeah, it was really cool getting to talk to him. Just freaking legend of a football player. You yeah, know? one of the best to ever do it. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, did you offer him any advice on the direction of the team? <laughs> oh, the, oh, did I? Oh, uh, he. I definitely should have said something like take Flacco out or something. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, he's like, yeah, we're definitely gonna win some football games for you or something like that. You told me, but <laughs> they won like four more. You're like, yeah. you're like John, you don't care about me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, I definitely should have asked him as far as like what we're gonna do in the off season, like, like who are we picking up in free agency or who are we drafted yeah. or something like that. But that would have been cool to ask him. But just like I totally went blank. Yeah, when well, the I mean, went. you're starstruck. At that oh point, yeah, yeah, I had no idea what to talk to him about. So yeah, it, it was kind of that sort of like weird situation. But but yeah, so it was really cool getting to talk to just a Bronco legend, mm -hmm. and so I'll be able to have that for the rest of my life. Yeah, true. So, yeah. So, uh, one more, one more football question from me. What's your ideal offseason for the Broncos, as far as free agency goes and the draft? What do you think you guys need to do in order to have a playoff run? Maybe. All right. Season? Well, so Chris Harris Jr. is gonna be signed by another team of free agency. We're gonna let him go. So we're definitely gonna need a corner. And I and I just found out today that Byron, that the Cowboys are gonna let Byron. Byron Jones going to hit free agency. Yeah. So I'm like, please come to the Broncos <laughs> because we need a corner. And so um, so my ideal free agent, my ideal offseason for the Broncos would probably just get our defense back in free agency. Like we like we either sign a long term deal with Justin Simmons or franchise tag him. And then we'll probably get um, re sign uh one of our defensive linemen because we have like two defensive linemen shelby harris and Derek wolf they're going to be in free agency and so hopefully we resign at least one of those guys maybe maybe resign a free agent deal lineman from another team mm -hmm. um so and, and then a free agent corner and um and so and then as far as the draft i really hope that so now that Henry Ruggs just ran like a four two seven and everybody's like, oh my god, he's so fast! Like that, and like nobody knew that already. Yeah. But it's just hopefully he's available there at fifteen for us for us to draft him or something like that. I just really hope that we get a really good uh, offensive draft mm -hmm. that we get some good speed receivers for us to surround Drew Lock with and um, and I mean even if we drafted an, an offensive tackle, I wouldn't be mad about that either because the tackle the tackle class in this draft is stacked. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I really hope that we go offense in the draft and defense and free agency. And now, and just because we also hired Pat Shermer as our offensive coordinator and we hired uh, Mike Shula as our QB coach. So that would be really good to help develop Drew in the off season. And plus with Drew, and I also heard Drew already had like a 90 minute phone conversation with Peyton Manning as far as like, what to do in the off season and when to meet with your receivers and stuff like that. So for Drew to have like those mentors with him, well, I, well, I think that will probably really help him a lot. Um, so yeah, just like defense and free agency and still learning under Vic Fangio. And, um, and so I feel like if we, if we get a decent, like after free agency in the draft is definitely, I feel like, if we get like a good, like a decent draft, like we had the past couple of years, because we've had some pretty solid pick the last couple of years. So if we have another draft this season, I mean, it'll be really tough facing the the Chiefs twice in our division, and we really don't know. And I mean, like with Philip Rivers leaving the Chargers, and 
we don't know what the Raiders are going to do. So, I mean, if those teams are in a muck and the only big threat to our division is the Chiefs, I feel like if we win at least one of those games, I mean, um, I feel like we'd be pretty, pretty set to hit the playoffs, you know. And um, Especially with seven teams this year, possibly. Yeah, so, I mean, if that ends up happening, yeah, I don't think we talked about that last time I was here. Yeah, no. The new NFL CBA, I mean, with the whole – I don't think the whole 17-game season is going to be – this coming year, no. but do you, do you think they're going to do the whole playoff thing this next year? I, there's that make the NFL a lot of money. Oh I, yeah, I, I think mean, TV ratings, sponsorships. Like, I mean, I don't see why they it wouldn't six games on Wild Card Weekend. Like, are dude, you kidding me, dude? That would oh, like man. three games on Saturday, three games on Sunday. So I'd just give one team a that give one team a buy, right? Yes, the top seed in each conference would have a buy. So that that f- two against seven, and then yes, yeah, okay, so on so forth. So having that top seed is going to be a lot more important going forward, probably. Yeah. So, I but, mean, I think it'd be interesting because I mean, who would want to root for a seven seed to win the whole thing? It'd, it'd right? feel more like a tournament, you know, like right, like how the NBA is, like the NBA playoffs and the not really baseball, but like the NBA playoffs, like it feels more because like a yeah, tournament. there's quarterfinals, semifinals, and yeah. and stuff like that. There's like because if yeah, because if you're like a one or a two seed before this, you can only have to win two games, and, yeah. and then you're in the Super Bowl. So, but now it'll have to be if you're so having a lot like more games to play, it'll be a lot more like a tournament. You know? Yeah, it'll feel it'll feel. I think it'll give like a better feel to playoffs. And I mean, you know, people have like a problem with like maybe like an eight, and eight, seven, and nine team going to the playoffs, but it's like that's happened when there's six teams. So yeah. I mean, like you might as well. Yeah, you know? I mean. And as far and I know it'll probably it's gonna like suck for like the players you know like yeah. the players are probably gonna but it's the playoffs you know like yeah. if they don't play seventeen games yeah they can do it off of a sixteen game season yeah and like players want to go to the playoffs so I mean if you come in you're a seventh seed and you're like constantly getting like those seven six five seeds like all the time yeah you know you become more of an attractive landing place right you know because like I mean you could be the seventh best team in the league and you know have all these playoff appearance streak and then you know build your team up as more of an attractive destination yeah I think I think that I think that's good for the fans players and teams I think yeah with the whole uh seven teams in the playoffs yeah yeah I think I think that'll be good um just because it'll give other teams like opportunities and everything I feel like um and it's gonna be it's gonna be weird definitely at first probably just how it was like how many years ago when they changed it and mm-hmm. I feel like but I feel like it's definitely gonna be a lot better only having one team get a buy and it's gonna yeah. be a lot more important so but yeah I'm I'm excited to see where it, where it goes and and I mean like and so. So yeah, it'll definitely give a better opportunity for us to get. In the yeah, playoffs. that's how I feel about us. Too. Like yeah, because yeah. having the Chiefs in our division, like God. So um, yeah, having yeah, it's it just sucks that Patrick Mahomes <laughs> is in my damn division. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? Well, I mean, that's that's why I like the AFC South because I mean it's it's lukewarm. Deshaun <laughs> Deshaun Watson is good, but he's not a good like postseason quarterback. He's, he's good, but he's not on a good team. No, but. yeah. But yeah. All right. So just getting into some questions. We only had like I think three total. All right. So the first question is going to be a football related question it's from one of my most loyal subscribers. His name's Patrick Jackson. He lives in the UK. Sweet. And he said, "Just how much fun is it watching Von Miller wreak havoc for your team every week?" Von Miller. Oh my gosh. Like watching <laughs> Von Miller in person was yeah. <laughs> awesome. Like oh my god, he's just a beast of a man. Like in so just. The way that Vaughn can, like, bend under linemen and just the way that he can, like, sort of, like, move his body to, like, different angles and run, run other under people, bull rush people. He's just so fast, and he's such so cool, and then watching him is awesome. And also, Vaughn is just one of the greatest guys in the world, too. Yeah. He's, he's such a cool guy. And yeah. Fashion I, sense is on the oh, oh, yeah. Man. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Freaking, he's a cowboy, dude. He's a country guy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I love Vaughn. He's, like... And his uh, and his contract is up for like maybe like this next year or something like I don't know how I can't remember, but yeah I hope that I hope he stays with us forever. I mean I don't know what I I don't know what I do with without Von Miller on my team. Like that's it, that's how I feel about a lot of players in the Jags and we just get rid of them. <laughs> Jalen like, Ramsey, fuck him. <laughs> yeah I don't know. 
Yeah, I just I just love Von Miller so much. It'd be so weird not having him on my team and just yeah. watching him every week is awesome. So, but yeah, Von's the greatest. He's the best. I love him. All right, and then uh, you didn't even you didn't even answer this question, but I brought it up earlier. Uh, Greg Frisbee asked, "Who was your favorite eighth grade?" Football. He said head football coach, so it's, it's it kind it kind it kind of makes it a little hard. But I'll just say football coach. I, I, I yeah, I'll go with Greg. Yeah, Greg is probably my my favorite coach just because of he. So, um, I connected with him a lot better outside of football too, uh-huh. and so like we had that relationship. Like, um, like I uh, my mom used to work with him. And, my dad did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. out at uh, ATK. Yeah, yeah, and so it's so he's just. I feel like he was the most personable out of all of them. Like he was, like mm-hmm. he was just uh, as far as like a person related to us, the best. And I just and um, but yeah, I think I just had the most fun with him. Yeah, and I had the best relationship with him. So yeah. Frisbee was definitely my favorite, but yeah, he was my favorite. I have to go with Snyder just because I'm a lineman. But yeah, I, well, yeah, but <laughs> it's just all of them were cool. Yeah, so. all of them. Yeah, none of them. Like Kerr wasn't bad, but no offense, Kerr, you probably be number three. Uh, not, yeah. not, not saying you're bad. Not but, saying like, it's bad, but yeah. <laughs> but then, like, you had it was like just it was literally like like if if like like me, Colton, and Cameron like just decided to coach football team. Like it just seemed yeah, like yeah, three yeah. best friends just right. decided that's, to. That's basically what it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly how it was. Just three dudes just coaching these eighth graders. Yeah. And it ended up working. So. Yeah. Well, that, they couldn't have got on like, like a better like year either. Like, I mean, our class in eighth grade was solid. Set. Yeah. We were stacked. So. Stupid solid. Yeah. It was, it, we had a lot of fun. It was cool. And like some practices we didn't even practice. Like we just like, we just <laughs> messed around. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. Yeah, we, we had fun with it, definitely. Um, all right, and this last one's from Rashida. She asked a question. Cool. Uh, she said, I did a story shortly after his accident. How's your progress going, and what are you most looking forward to this year? My progress is going pretty good. Um, I uh, work a lot with my legs, and I work a lot and a little bit with my arms as much as I can. Like, as far as – so what I do at therapy is that I really try to – I work on my balance mm-hmm. while I stand, and so I'm really I'm getting up to like over a minute as far as standing up without really touching anything, and and so I mean like to look at where I am now and to look where I was yeah. like a year ago, like holy shit, dude! Like I like I didn't like I had no idea how far along I would be at this point. But I feel like I, uh, I'm definitely making some pretty good progress. I mean, like going day by day, you don't really see it, you know, just because it's pretty slow. But I mean, if I would look at sort of like a video from like a few months ago or like over a year ago, I'm definitely not as near as where I am now as I was then. Mm-hmm. So to just look back and see how far I've come has just been really, really great. And it's just it kind of just helps me get through it to just know like how much progress I have made. And like, if I can do make this much progress in this amount of time, just imagine what I could do with, you know, I got the rest of my life to recover, you know? And so, yeah. yeah, And so like with me having that mentality and just keep working at it every day, I'm, uh, I've just been really, and it's been really nice to have like a really good physical therapist and have, go to a nice place and have like the greatest sort of support system. And, and so, yeah, my body's doing pretty all right. I'm getting better. Um, and, um, what I'm most, um, looking forward to this year, um, I really want to, so I go to, uh, Colorado, uh, once a year, every year for like a checkup. And I guess I'm really trying, I'm really trying to go in the fall so I can go to another game. And so, I mean, that'd be really dope. So I could go to Denver, watch another football game. And, uh, and so I'm really looking forward to sort of getting out a whole lot more, like maybe like going camping or maybe just going out and going to a couple, like maybe like a, like a Cougs game or two or maybe yeah. just something like that. I'm really just looking forward to just getting out. And now that I'm 21, I'll be able to go to a lot more places that I wasn't able to before, you know, and so yeah. – so that's pretty much what I'm uh, looking forward to the most, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right, man. We're 
hour 23 minute deep and this was a great conversation i had with you and again i i want to i want to thank you because you know uh like i said you did a story on the news that's a three minute news segment but for you to come here mm-hmm. talk about your situation for an hour i really appreciate it and i hope everybody listening appreciates it as well is there anything you want to say before we kind of end this podcast uh well i just wanted to say thank you for having me on i mean never done anything like this before so it's been really cool and just thank you for letting me talk about me and uh I had a lot of fun, and hopefully that we can talk about football a whole lot more going forward, man. Oh, like, this ain't going to be the last oh, time yeah. on here, dude. Yeah, like, once, <laughs> like after free agency and after the draft, I mean, I'm hoping to talk a whole lot more and about football. I love talking about football with you, and um, yeah. and so I've really had uh, found a sort of like a new love for football after being a super big fan for the Broncos, so I mean... Um, that's how I they guess. get you. That's how football gets you. Once you get to, like, like once you just, like, kind of watch football for, like, the nuance of it... But once you find a team that you just get like yeah. sucked into, well, like growing up, it's just I was a I was a bandwagoner, dude. I didn't have a team. Like, you were, I, you were I, I was, I was horrible. Like <laughs> yeah. I was horrible. But so it's just I because I didn't have a team because like I just my dad liked the Seahawks and I'm like no nah, I'm not rooting for the Seahawks. Yeah. I mean it's just for me to now have a team and now have a love for the game again. It's been great and I love it. And just so, but yeah, thanks, Street, for having me on and I've really enjoyed this. So thank you. So yeah. All right, I appreciate you coming on. Is there any? Uh, do you want to plug your Instagram or anything like that for people following? Oh uh, well, my Instagram is uh, Zacklemore32, and so is Z A C K L E M O O R E 32, and that's also my Twitter. And so I try to post my progress updates every now and then. I haven't posted one really lately, but I need to post again. So if you guys want to go give that a follow, that'd be great. And thank you. Yep, and his uh, Twitter and Instagram will be in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Tree Talks with Podcast, episode number five. Make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Make sure you check all the other links down below. You can find his Instagram his tw- and his Twitter down there. You can also like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. And follow me on Instagram, at Trayvon Pixley. Thank you guys so much for listening. You guys have a great day. get that eighth batch, eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks. Straight facts, we gon' end up in that Maybach, Maybach speed racer on that racetrack, racetrack. I'm just trying to get that eighth batch, eighth batch flamethrower. How we blaze tracks? Straight facts, we gon' end up in that Maybach, Maybach speed racer on that.